everybody. Happy Monday. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Now, you be safe tonight. Happy 4th of July to every single one of you. Happy Independence Day. Have a great time, but most of all, be safe during the celebrations. Now, we have some serious storms that is ramping up. They're already starting for southern Minnesota, going through Iowa, and these are some nasty little storms. This is also bringing some very strong winds with it as well. Already in the high 50 miles per hour wind gusts on the very front of this storm as it passes through high 40s and high 50s as well and these storms are moving through some very dense area of population and there is a growing tornado threat for today as well as tomorrow so this is going to be going all afternoon long and you can see within the next hour how many places this wind damage is going to be affecting as it comes forward so let me give you the forecast of what you can expect as far as the tornadoes going on because a tornado threat is a growing threat right now as well as what's going on because now we have a geomagnetic storm watch going on so we have possible cmes coming off plus we already had one the other day now remember to share the information let others know about this information and like the video if you are loving these updates guys thank you so much for your support all the links are in the description of everything i'm going to show you as well as timestamps for today i see some of y'all need some timestamps. i do have the timestamps for the severe weather later in the video so make sure you subscribe i am all year long let's go through the cmes first what's going on with the geomagnetic storm watch so this is coronal hole number 97 and it will be facing earth over the next several days a solar wind stream flowing from the zone could reach earth beginning july 5th i'm actually showing that july 6th will be the strongest day and here's a good shot of it and you can see how the solar winds will just be dispersing from all different angles from this hole so i got this video that you can go watch this is from free documentary and it shows you exactly what's going on with these cmes these coronal mass ejections as we get the sun spots it starts giving us our wind and then when it does these bursts of these solar flares we get the cmes and that comes towards earth when it's facing towards earth and it gives us not only geomagnetic storm watches and warnings but we also get auroras out of this and here's the latest graph of the noctilucent clouds that we spoke about yesterday you can see how all over north pole is where it's at its brightest and strongest and remember this is the strongest we've had within the last 15 years you're also gonna be able to see the aurora lights as this happens as well so as you can see for the north pole right here that you can see it updates every 30 minutes who has the best chances of seeing the aurora lights so far? And this is just for today. And you can see for today, this is the way you're going to see it most in the polar region. And right here in the yellow is still unsettled. But this will be stretching as we go all the way until the 6th. Northern Michigan, northern Maine, northern half of the country will see these lights as well as Canada. So I also have this link in the description for y'all so y'all can see where you're at and where these northern lights were the other day because we did have the CME the other day. It wasn't a real strong one, but you can see from your state where you're at, from your country, where the Aurora lights will be looking like and what it did look like when it passed by just today and this morning. You see these shots are from this morning. So a lot of people did see the Aurora lights already and there's more coming. Even right here, you see that we had at 1025 this morning, a random fireball. And you can see that best right here. This was taken by Les Anderson this morning, and it was from the South Bruce Peninsula in Ontario, Canada. And you can see the fireball going across the sky. Matter of fact, we had a few pass by already. So what's the news on this space weather? So we have a geomagnetic storm watch. So NOAA forecasters say there's a chance of a minor G1 class geomagnetic storm on July 6th. This is when a stream of solar wind is expected to hit Earth's magnetic field and the gaseous material is flowing from a cyclops-like hole in the sun's atmosphere. Now the aurora lights that I showed you came from this one right here. We had a CME, a coronal mass ejection on July 1st passed close to earth and it did not hit but that was enough to spark a g1 class geomagnetic storm with auroras across many northern tier of the u.s states but you will have good views in the sky during this time as you can see right here in this shot that was taken out in a high desert that you can see the milky way pretty nice shot and just like it says right here, it does say minor G1 geomagnetic storm impacts. 
To power systems, it would be a weak power grid fluctuations that can occur. Spacecraft operations, minor impact on satellite operations are possible. But migratory animals are affected at this and higher levels. So the aurora is commonly visible at high altitudes, northern Michigan and Maine. So I got the link for this page as well, so you can go see the updates on the satellite that gets all these readings from the sun. You can see how you can see Hawaii, you can see the white sands, but it shows you where its location is at live feed and where it's going to examine these coronal mass ejections and the sunspots. You can see the path that has been taken on. This is a path that takes nonstop and takes photographs and images of the sun. Also have this live tracking of CMEs for all of you, so you can go check it out for yourself. But as you're following the live tracking of what happened on the first, as well as what's going to be happening for the next day or two, because this hole is facing towards us. So this is a live tracking feed, so you can see exactly what's going on. Also this page, so you can check the live tracking of the solar flares. Because as you can see, we had a couple little bitty flares pop up. But as for today, you see it's starting to rise again already. And this is expected to be stronger for the 6th. And you can see right here, here's your three-day geomagnetic forecast. For today, they're expecting the Class 5 G1. That's where you're going to see it in the northern hemisphere. And then as you go through the 6th, it's going to be another Class 5 G1 where you'll be able to see these lights again as well. So remember, there could be some minor disruptions today and on the 6th as far as things go with the satellite as well as the migratory animals that do migrate. They will have issues during this time. But you can see how much different the levels are going to be on the 6th because as you see right here for July 4th, we're expected a G1 already and it's not too high of levels as it goes down for tomorrow. But on the 6th, it really raises up to red on the storm conditions. So the six looks like when we really could have these interruptions and these problems around our earth. So I will keep you updated on that. Remember all the links are in the description so you can see everything live tracking for yourself. Just remember there's gonna be some disruptions today and it's gonna be even stronger on the six as well as the auroras. If you do like to follow the auroras, you'll see them better on the six. So make sure you go to links in the description and see the live tracking of the auroras it updates every 30 minutes so you can know when your area could be impacted so you can see this. Now we have the growing threat for the severe weather for today, tomorrow, as well as Wednesday. So for today, your tornado threat has grown some more. You have the 2% here as well as over here by the Great Lakes. You have your wind threat and you have your hail threat in the same areas. But I'm showing a big wind threat growing for today, especially for tomorrow. So your chances for tornadoes for today is Chicago, Illinois, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Minneapolis, Minnesota, St. Paul, Minnesota, and Madison, Wisconsin. That's the main populated cities. Now for tomorrow, this is going to go further into the Ohio Valley and towards the northeast. Your tornado threat has expanded out for tomorrow. You have a green section from Montana. Remember, this keeps starting in Montana. But now it's going to carry all the way to the northeast with a big green section of 2% chances for tornadoes as well as winds the whole area is under a 15 percent chance for winds and hail this is for tomorrow so your city's at risk for tornadoes for tomorrow for tuesday once again chicago illinois columbus ohio baltimore maryland washington dc and cleveland ohio remember these links are in the description for you to go click on anytime throughout the day click on tornado go down to the bottom and you'll see which cities are at most impact as well as Wednesday is going to carry all the way into Wednesday with your severe weather threat up to a 15% chance again. And you can see your dew points for today that you get a big pocket of 70s. A lot of strong dew points that would help support thunderstorm activity. And it's all night long. And then for tomorrow, it's going to grow again and move over towards Ohio Valley. And this is a nasty little storm that is pushing down with very high winds. So far, high resolution wrap refresh is seen anywhere from 80 towards 100. You can also see with your lift with the cape that you do have a lot of lift, not only the hot temperatures creating that, but a lot of strong dew points creating a lot of the lift right in the area that you need to watch out for tornadoes. And for tomorrow, it's going to stretch again some very strong lift in the region mostly for eastern Nebraska, northern Iowa, southern Minnesota, and all across the Ohio Valley having very strong lift as those storms come by for tomorrow evening. 
And you can see how the winds are expected to just come out for tomorrow evening. You got a big Boeing coming out. Now, just for tonight, you're going to have these storms moving through southern Minnesota, Iowa, all the way till noontime. Then it's going to be in Wisconsin and it's going to get a little more severe. That red right there is indicative to large hail coming out of that storm cell as you go from 3 p.m all the way until seven and eight o'clock at night and there is some shear that is coming off on these cells right now it's not a lot of shear showing that it could be a major tornado come out of it but definitely some straight line winds you can see the bowing out in the storm as it passes by so it is going to be some winds involved with these cells as it comes by all evening and then dissipating a little bit around nine and ten o'clock and going into Michigan, going to northern Illinois, and headed towards Indiana for the overnight hours. This is the 18 hours of high-resolution rapid refresh. And as you look with the NAND 3K, just like I said yesterday, it looks like that downburst did move further to the east. So if you remember that downburst was right here, but I said since it's 48 hours away, this will probably move a little further east. And NAND 3K is picking up that around tomorrow that it's going to do a little downburst on these storms. And that does have a lot of bowing out in it. So there's going to be chances for winds. But as you look at high resolution rapid refresh, you can see right around 2 p.m. tomorrow, the wind's going to start picking up. You're going to have spots from these cells today and tonight, anywhere from 60 to 80 miles per hour wind gusts coming with them. But tomorrow it starts picking up to 40 50 and then it just jumps to some very violent cells that passes through southern minnesota as well as iowa now this is high resolution rapid refresh but it is a 48 hours and a 48 hours does overdo it just a little bit but still anywhere from 80 to 100 miles per hour wind gusts is possible with these cells as they pass by for tomorrow tomorrow looks like it's really going to be a significant event especially for southern Minnesota, Iowa, southern Wisconsin, and northern Illinois. We did have two nasty tornadoes in Nebraska yesterday. So this one did do considerable damage to a house. Multiple power lines were down in the area. It was multiple damage you can find on Twitter that came from these tornadoes. So as you look at higher resolution rapid refresh and check your helicity values, which gives you your wind direction change with height, which is exactly what a strong storm a tornado is, you can see that they did have some long cells passing through eastern Nebraska. And as we go through today, it don't get too strong until it goes towards Wisconsin and northern Illinois. And that's all the way until 8 and 9 o'clock at night. Some strong possibilities for southern Wisconsin and northern Illinois to get a long track, long live cell, potential tornado. And you'll see it also comes back later tonight for Montana and starts that cycle all over again for chances for long-lived cells going all the way from Montana, North Dakota, as you go through Tuesday morning. And then where all that wind is, it just spreads out to some strong cells that could come anywhere from northern Nebraska, southeastern South Dakota, southern Minnesota, northern Iowa, and going towards Wisconsin again. So these definitely show that we have not only the cells that we have coming tonight, but we have some very strong long-lived cells that would be coming for tomorrow with this system while we see very high and dangerous winds with it. So for today, you do have a lot of marginal for flash flooding right here for your monsoon season for New Mexico, Arizona, Colorado. You even got a slight risk for today. Up here in Montana, you have a slight risk as well as right here for southeastern Minnesota, eastern Iowa, northern Illinois, and southern Wisconsin. You have a slight risk for flash flooding for today as well as the southeast. For tomorrow, as this grows even more, you have another slight risk for the upper Midwest. You still have your monsoon season moving over towards New Mexico now. You have some for the south as well as Florida. But now you have this slight risk that's been showing two days in a row now right here for southeastern Ohio and for West Virginia, southwestern Pennsylvania. Slight risk for flash flooding. And as you go through Wednesday, it's going to grow even more. Now you have a big widespread marginal with a big slight risk coming through with these storms. So it's, remember, I know a lot of y'all do need to rainfall, but a lot of these areas is too much at one time and it will be flash flooding. So you can see all the way to Wednesday evening with National Weather Service what the amount of rainfall is. And it looks like you can get up to an inch for southern Mississippi, southwestern Alabama, southern Florida. But up here in the north central, it's going to start growing to an inch for southwestern North Dakota. And it's going to start getting heavier as you go towards Iowa, Wisconsin, over by the Great Lakes. Eastern Iowa, one to possibly two inches. 
Central to southern Wisconsin, one inch. Two inches towards southern Wisconsin, even heavier. And northern Illinois getting in for an inch to almost two inches. And western Michigan as well. This is all the way until Wednesday morning. Then as you go into Wednesday for that big slight risk, you see how it grows into a big area of two plus inches of rainfall. That's why you have the big slight risk for Wednesday as well. So be careful tonight for the chances for those tornadoes as well as tomorrow. Tomorrow looks really strong for a good chance for those very high winds. So downgrade a little bit because high resolution rapid refresh 48 hours is a little overdoing it. But that's two days in a row it's seen some very high winds in that region. So I will update you tomorrow morning again for tomorrow's severe weather. I like to stay as close as we can with the 18 hours. It is way better data. As well as that geomagnetic storm watch. Remember, it's going to be stronger on the 6th, on Wednesday. That's when it looks like it's going to have its strongest impacts as far as satellites, as far as migratory animals, as well as your roars. So if you want to go watch the roars, remember, Wednesday would be your best day to see it, at least for the northern half of the U.S. But thank you so much for visiting my channel today. God bless every single one of you this evening. Be very careful wherever you go, please. Now today I want to read Luke 21. Verses 7 through 28. And they asked him, saying, Master, but when shall these things be? And what sign will there be when these things shall come to pass? And he said, Take heed that ye be not deceived. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. And the time draweth near. Go ye not therefore after them. But when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified. For these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, and famines, and pestilences, and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. But before all these, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. And it shall turn to you for a testimony. Settle it therefore in your hearts, not to meditate before what ye shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. And ye shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinsfolk and friends, and some of you shall they cause to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but there shall not an hair on your head perish. In your patience possess ye your souls. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath upon this people. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh.
Amen. Have a great day today, everybody. Please be safe. I can't say that enough. Fireworks can be fun, but they can cause fires. They can cause issues. Just be careful. God bless all of you. Have a very great and a very safe 4th of July tonight. Remember, all power, all glory does go to Yahweh, God of Jacob, our Father. coming sooner than we think nobody knows the time just be aware of the signs <laughs> amen <laughs> hallelujah even so lord come have a great day everybody